Hello, and welcome to part one of a series on the meaning, purpose, and joy of dance. It is my hope that these presentations can illuminate a subject that is rarely examined closely, as well as to inspire people to dance. I think that our culture could use more dancing, and that it can be a source of culture and entertainment that nothing can replace. Before I talk about dance in depth, I must first talk about what dance is in a most universal sense. Well, even a child could show you a dance, giving a clear and simple definition of dance itself is more difficult. To do this, I shall posit one postulate, then provide essential definitions leading to a genus and species definition of dance. While dance can be proven to be an art, and its place as an art can be explored in great depth, that is a topic for another presentation. For this presentation, I shall rely on the authority of Aristotle and the consensus of the ages that dance is indeed an art. That is the genus of my definition. To find the species, I shall examine how dance as an art is different from other arts, such as painting or music. To do this, we must find the medium and mode of dance. Before this, however, let us look briefly at painting, using an easier art form to illuminate the process. Painting utilizes some canvas and some pigments to send an image to the eye of its beholder. While many types of pigments and canvases may be used, and an infinite number of images can be made, all paintings are bound by the fact that you must use these things. With this example in mind, I shall now describe the medium and mode of dance. Now, this rather obvious claim that the medium of dance is the body does have some nuance. In speech, we often attribute dancing to such things as the waves, the grass, or even sugar plums. This is analogous dancing, which is not true dancing. There must be intention to move the body in a way that says something for it to be truly dance. This does surprisingly mean that dancing is not an innately human act seeing as certain animals dance for territorial or major purposes. Naturally, humans can dance for much higher reasons and say better things than, this tree is mine. Of course, it is not enough to move a body with intention, that is merely gesture. For it to become dance requires the addition of rhythm and form. Anyone who has listened to music knows the rhythm or beat of a song makes a great difference. The same is true in dance. Trying to dance swing to a waltz song cannot work as the music and steps do not match. In fact, Aristotle even claims that dance is music, just rhythm without melody. I add form because how you dance can make just as much of a difference as what you are dancing. Imagine a wedding. The bride would dance differently with her father than her new husband even if the same kind of slow rhythm was used for both dances. Putting everything together, I say that dance is the beautiful arrangement or art of bodies in motion according to rhythm and form. This does run against most modern definitions of dance, which usually claim that dance is a mode of self-expression. While dance can certainly be a mode of self-expression, as an art form it can do much more than that. It can express facts, forge relationships, and expound universal ideas. Much like an actor, what and how you dance can say things that go far beyond yourself. Of course, all art has degrees, and rightfully so. Not every dance needs to be a masterpiece, just as every painting is not the Mona Lisa. It is good to dance to show how you feel, or to have a good time, but why do we have to stop there? It is good to dance with passion, but we can also dance with purpose and with understanding. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Join me for part two, where I hope to more closely examine why dance is an art as opposed to a simple hobby or recreation. Thank you very much for watching, and go out and get dancing.